Hello, my good fellows. Okay, today we're making some hoagies. Yep, delicious sandwiches. I'm after a good bread for some yummy sandwiches. I have a sandwich deficiency in my life, so we're gonna make some yummy bread today and some hoagies. Okay, here's a look at our hoagie buns. I think they turned out really nicely. It'd be nice if they were a little bit more fluffy, but I think the seasoning on there and then the addition of lots of tasty meats and cheese and other fun things, these things will be magical. So what is the term hoagie? What does hoagie mean? Apparently in 1967, in a journal called American Speech, I believe it is, the term hoagie was first noticed in the 19th or 20th century in the Italian American community in South Philadelphia. Okay. In those days, on the hoke was a phrase used to describe a poor person. And the deli owners in the area would give these poor people meat and bread and cheese, and they called it a hokey. And it is felt that the Italian immigrants couldn't pronounce the word hokey, and they called it a hoagie. Another explanation for the term hoagie is that Italian-American shipyard workers who worked on Hog Island eventually called them hoggies, but over time, the word was corrupted and they eventually called them hoagies. You know, it doesn't even really matter about all that history. What we're after is a delicious Sammy. Today, we're going to use diastatic malt powder. And diastatic malt powder is actually malt powder from flour that is made from barley grains, and then they're sprouted, and then they're dried at low temperatures, and then they're ground into powder. And what diastatic malt powder does is it helps to make the bread rise so improved rising of the bread and also improves the texture and also makes it more authentic looking because we're authentic around here to make our hoagie ancestors happy we don't want to piss off the south Phillians. we got to make our south philly ancestors happy and the other option is to use amylase however it actually costs more we're going to use this diastatic malt powder today and see how it turns out Later on in the process, we're also going to use some ice cubes in the oven to help create oven spring. But I'll show you that a little bit later. So as usual, the ingredients will be listed below. And I'm going to make six hoagies today. So in a bowl, you're going to want to warm up 390 grams of milk. And I'm using 2% milk here, but you could use 1% or skim milk if you want to. And to this, you're going to add 9 grams of instant dry yeast and also add 12 grams of the diastatic malt powder and give it a good mix with your tiny whisk. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this sit until your yeast blooms. Now, if your yeast doesn't bloom, then you know your yeast is bad. You're gonna throw it all out, get some new yeast. Okay, I let this sit for 15 minutes and look at this awesomeness on top here. So this definitely is ready to go. The next step is you're going to take your bread flour, but you could also use all-purpose flour, also known as AP flour, for those who are super fancy, and you're going to want to add 600 grams to your stand mixer. Next, you're going to add 15 grams of honey. Pro tip, make sure that your honey's super melty before you put it in so it's easier to pour. And then add 30 grams of extra virgin olive oil, 12 grams of salt. Go ahead and put on your dough hook and mix it well. Okay, once that's mixed for a couple minutes, go ahead and add your milk mixture. And mix that super well. Occasionally stop your mixer and make sure you get all the flour off the edges. And you're gonna wanna mix this until it forms a nice cohesive ball. Okay, I just checked this. This is still probably too wet. So I'm gonna add another 50 grams of bread flour to this and see if I can get this to become a little bit less wet. We want a nice cohesive ball, but this is just too squishy, squishy, squish. So add this flour slowly. You don't want to add too much flour and get this dry and then start chasing your own tail. So just take it slowly. Let's give her a mix for a few minutes. Okay, this looks a lot better. It's a much better cohesive dough ball. So I'm gonna take off the hook and then I'm gonna pop this off the stand and I'm gonna cover this and let it sit for 15 minutes. 
Okay, once this is rested for about 15 minutes, you're gonna to wanna to take it out of your bowl and put it on a clean work surface. And then we're gonna knead this for eight to 10 minutes. Just work it in, mix those ingredients together. What you're looking for is the dough's gonna turn into a nice, round, happy ball. This dough isn't that sticky, it's only slightly tacky. Okay, after kneading this for 15 minutes, roll it into a nice little ball, put it in your pan. I'm gonna cover this with a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't dry out. And then go ahead and cover it with your saran wrap and let it sit for about an hour or until it doubles in size. And as usual, put a picture of yourself on there and the CTT logo. It'll make your ancestors happy. Okay, so it's been an hour. Let's uncover this. That's easily doubled in size. Like it looks awesome. So go ahead and punch this down. Then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna weigh this and then you're gonna divide this up into six even dough balls. And then you're gonna take each one of these, make sure all the dough's incorporated, roll them into nice little balls. And then what you're gonna do next is press these out flat. And then on one side, start rolling in the edges to make one big long piece of dough. Once you've done that, on the side where there's a crease, pinch all of these edges together. And even the ends. And then just roll it out so it's about 10 inches long. Perfect. Pro tip, work quickly because you don't want this dough to dry out. And then on a baking sheet, just dust it with cornmeal. And then you'll wanna put the same side down. So once you get these laid out, cover them with plastic wrap so they don't dry out. Pro tip, don't cover these too tightly because they're going to want to rise. So just kind of lightly cover them and set them aside. And we're going to let these proof a second time for about one hour. Okay, go ahead and get your oven preheated to 375 and let this preheat for a good 30 minutes. The next thing you want to do is put the cast iron pan at the bottom of your oven because you're going to put some ice cubes in there right when you start cooking to help with the oven spring. That steam that's rising from the cast iron pan will help to fluff up your buns. Okay, we're going to first make a little egg wash. So get one egg, put a little splash of water in there and mix it up and then go ahead and give your bread a little egg wash. These look super fluffy. And then you're gonna add your favorite seasoning. We're using a little garlic salt and then a little Italian seasoning. And you're gonna to wanna to use a fancy tool similar to this to cut little slits in your bread or you can use a really sharp knife. So I'm gonna approach this kind of off to the side and maybe go about a quarter inch deep. Make a nice little slit along the side of your bread. And this will cause it to fluff up and make it look super pretty. And then if you wanna, if you wanna sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal over the top of these to give a little bit of texture. Okay, go ahead and put your bread in here. And then you're gonna get five or six ice cubes and throw it down in your pan. And then go ahead and close your oven. And then we're gonna let this cook for about eight to 10 minutes. And then we're gonna rotate this 180 degrees and cook it for another 10 minutes. And you're gonna to wanna to cook these until they're golden brown. Okay, so about halfway through, I spritzed these with water too because I just didn't think they were getting brown enough. But this is after about 25 minutes in the oven. These look pretty good. So now I'm just gonna cook the other batch. So add some more seasoning to these if you want to or keep them plain like this one over here. So we're gonna let these cool off and then we're gonna taste them. And if you really wanna get technical with this, then you can check the internal temperature and they should be about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's probably not necessary.
here's our hoagie rolls. Now, they didn't puff up super big, but I bet they're going to be tasty. This is what I would do with them. I would probably shorten the length of these things maybe to eight inches. And I don't know if this made a difference or not, but I put extra ice in the pan in the oven halfway through, and I've spritzed these a couple times. But they're still a little bit flat, so this is still a work in progress, but that's what they look like. Okay, so I'm going to cut this open. Get yourself a good sharp knife. That's what it looks like on the inside. Not bad looking. Nice and fluffy. Okay, put yourself a nice little squirt of mayo on there. And then some cheese. And then some pepperonis. And some salamis. And some turkeys. Okay, and then some tomatoes. And then some lettuce. And some olives. And some pepperoncinis. A little pepper, a little salt, and a squirt of some spicy mustard. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. And then we're going to cap it. And then I'm going to wrap this in either some butcher's paper or you could do some parchment paper and roll it up nice and tightly. Okay, grab your sandwich. Stick it up on your paper. Okay, and roll this puppy up. Pull it up nice and tight. Twist the ends. Let this sit for 20 minutes and let the flavors get to know each other. This is better than Subway sandwiches. Don't eat that garbage. Make these at home. This is a pretty freaking good sandwich. If you don't eat this, you're gonna suck your whole life. <laughs> Where are you gonna put that? Yeah. Okay, I just put a little balsamic vinegar on here and some oil too. Let's see how that tastes. Oh, I got screwed on my first half of the sandwich because that's magical. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're missing out. You gotta slap some of that you on there. Miss me? Yeah. You guys want any seasoning on your bread? What kind? What kind, donkey? Come on, come on. No. Hopefully this didn't move or shift. Or I'm gonna have acute sadness. Gotta feel the jet. I got the sandwich. Another prevalent explanation is that the ship workers on Okay. Another explanation is that Italian American Another prevalent explanation is that Italian American ship dock workers shipyard. Another prevalent explanation is that Italian American workers Another. Hmm. Quite on the set.